stupid. Huckley, out of date. This is ridiculous. If I can't find something nice to wear, I'm not going. Just like the Grinch, many people have cluttered closets filled with clothes they have bought but never wore. In the clutter of all those clothes, it's hard to find the clothes you want and hard to decide what outfits you want to make from those clothes. Our solution, Smart Wardrobe, will implement an outfit visualizer that helps you choose outfits based on the clothes you have and a clothing retriever that makes finding your clothes simple. This is the breakdown of our system on the software side. It starts off with the clothing web scraping API that browses the internet for pictures of trending outfits. Once we find those outfits, we send them to our clothing recognition model that breaks down the clothing articles in the outfit, like a black t-shirt and blue jeans. Once we analyze the pictures, we store them so our matching API can determine which outfits it can make given the clothing in our user's closet. All the, all the possible outfits are then shown to our user in the user interface. From the user interface, users can add and take clothes and set ratings for clothes to express what they like and dislike. Once the user selects an outfit, that data is sent to the robot API, which communicates with our hardware. For our hardware system specification, once we receive the input of what clothing we want, we look through the user's closet to see where those items are stored. Once the locations are determined, we send that information to an Arduino, which spins our servo to the correct location for the user to retrieve their clothing. Here's a breakdown of how our rotating hanger works. We have a circular rotating rack that is placed on a turntable bearing on a base to take the weight of the clothing and help the system rotate. The rack is then attached to gears, which are spun by the servo for it to rotate to the correct piece of clothing. Next, we will be looking at different components of our project. The first is the web scraping API. Here, we can give up to two inputs that we want our system to find outfits for, specifying what kind of clothing and then color as an RGB value. Here, we're looking for a red jacket and blue jeans. Finally, we can tell the system how many pictures we want them to download. Once we run the program here, we can see the program browsing Google Images and going through each photo to download them until we reach our specified count that we wanted. This is our user interface and we are displaying adding clothes. We first add an image of a red hoodie and black jeans and we can see the top five categories that each image is believed to be. The user can choose and then we add it to the clothing rack. Now we see our rack rotating to empty spaces where we can add the clothes and the weight is distributed to not add too much weight to one side. Next, we are displaying taking clothes. We request an outfit that consists of hoodies and jeans and has the color red in it. We can see a variety of outfit choices and we can choose the one we want and submit it into the system. Once you submit the outfit, the clothing rack will rotate to bring the items that you requested to you. Here we can see the red hoodie is brought to us first and the black jeans are brought to us next. After, we can demonstrate returning clothes. We return the outfit we just took and can submit ratings of how much we like the clothes when we do. Now we can see the clothing rack spin to the locations where the clothes once were. We first spin to return the red hoodie and then we spin to return the black jeans, maintaining the positions they once were. Next, we will talk about our clothing recognition model. This model is used to recognize, detect, and classify different clothing articles within an image. Within our system, it's used by the robot API to classify a user's own clothes, and it's also used by the web scraper to validate images we find online. Some background knowledge in neural networks is needed to fully understand this component, as our clothing recognition model uses neural networks to make its predictions. An artificial neural network is a collection of nodes or neurons that loosely models the neurons in a brain. Although each neuron can only do simple operations, after training millions of neurons on a lot of training data, you can teach the network to perform complex tasks. On the right-hand side is the specific neural network architecture we are planning to use, EfficientNet. Compared to other neural networks, EfficientNet uses compound scaling as opposed to only scaling one dimension. This creates a neural network that is easy to train, fast to run, and high in accuracy. It is the current state-of-the-art architecture. Here is how we are using neural networks in our system. The clothing detector uses an efficient debt object detector to find the locations of recognized clothing objects. As you can see, the detector has recognized a top and a bottom. The image is then cropped with the bounding box so the classifier knows which clothing object it needs to focus on for that image. The classifier then uses an efficient net classifier to determine the labels that it believes the cropped images belong to. As you can see, the classifier thinks the top image is most likely a tee, a top, or a blouse, 
The bottom image, on the other hand, is most likely jeans, shorts, or chinos. Here's a diagram of how we train our neural networks. First, our images go through a pre-processing step. This provides random transformation on the image before it's used as input for the network. This random transformation keeps the data fresh and prevents overfitting, which I will explain later. Then, a batch of these pre-processed images are sent as input to the neural network. The output of the network is collected and compared to the correct labels. A loss function is used to calculate how incorrect the model's predictions are, and this data is fed back into the neural network to update the weights and to reduce the loss, which is known as backpropagation. This process is repeated until the accuracy of the network plateaus. Initially, the weights of the neural network are set to a pre-trained model made from the ImageNet database. This is much better than randomly initializing the weights and also prevents overfitting. We also only apply backpropagation on the output layers for many training cycles before we even attempt to touch the hidden layers. Again, this is to help with um, overfitting and the randomness of the output layers do not mess up the good image net weights in the hidden layer. Now you'll talk about our initial metrics and if we managed to meet them. For our clothing matching and preference model, after testing, we found out the outputs reported negatively were consistently shown last in order, and the ones they liked were shown first. Additionally, on restart, the user preferences remained, but this met our initial metrics. For the web scraping API, we used Google Images and were able to query more than 10 photos for each outfit choice, so we ended up not having to supplement from our training database, and our metrics were passed well. For the clothing recognition model, we were able to help our classifier reach 91% top 5 accuracy, which passed our initial requirement of 90% accuracy. For the runtime, we measured our startup time at 24.7 seconds. For the clothing recognition model, we found the latency to be 9.6 seconds, meaning it took 9.6 seconds for the first image to be identified, but if we had a large batch, we could get the throughput to 0.15 seconds per image. The initial 9.6 seconds for the first image to be identified and shown was longer than the initial metric of 5 seconds. However, by implementing caching, the user is able to load images much faster after the first time, which solved the problem in most use cases. On the hardware side, after rotating with 20 clothes on the rack, we were able to successfully rotate to within 9 degrees of each clothing article. In addition to that, we found that there were no accumulative loss after 100 rotations due to the nature of the servo we cho chosen. So we successfully passed our initial metrics for rotational movement. For the runtime, we found our servo ran at 50 degrees per second. This meant that within 5 seconds, we could only rotate 250 degrees, and the max time it could take to get to an article of clothing was around 7 seconds. This didn't meet our initial metric, but we were still able to reach about 70% of the clothing within our time frame, which we consider good for most use cases. The next challenge we faced was overfitting, as I mentioned before. Overfitting is when the model gets too good at understanding the training data and starts performing really badly on the real data. This was a big problem. We used a few well-known techniques like pre-trained rates and pre-processing that I mentioned earlier, as well as batch normalization and dropout layers, and this solved their problem. The final challenge that we faced is the distribution of our training data. The largest chunk you see there in the pie chart is dresses, seeing up around a quarter of our training data. As you can see, the distribution is very skewed. This means that our model would focus more on predicting dresses correctly, and this perhaps would compromise the accuracy for other classes. Our validation testing indeed shows this, as our model could predict dresses with over 98% accuracy but flannels with only 60% accuracy. This is an unfortunate property of our data set, deep fashion. It was out of our project scope to create our own data set of hundreds of thousands of labeled clothing images, so it was difficult for us to address this issue. Design trade-offs we faced in making our clothing recognition model started with which model we wanted to use. We looked at three options, ResNet 34, EfficientNet B0, and EfficientNet B1. You can see the stats above. ResNet 34 had better speed than EfficientNet B1, but suffered in accuracy. We prioritized the accuracy of our model and chose EfficientNet B1 because we thought users seeing outfits and then receiving clothes are very different from what they saw as a priority to avoid. On the hardware side, for our servo choice, we looked at two servos. The first could rotate 360 degrees, which was ideal because that was the range of motion we needed. It also had adjustable speed, which would help reach clothing faster. However, we found that the strength requirements were lower and was a continuous rotation servo, meaning we couldn't rotate it to fixed degrees. The second servo was 270 degree servo, which was stronger and could rotate to specific degrees. However, it did not have adjustable speed, 
and required the use of gear ratio because it only rotated, to, rotated 270 degrees. We chose a 270 degree servo mainly for the extra strength and the ability to rotate to specific degrees. Being able to rotate to specific degrees allowed the issue of accumulated loss to be less of a problem.